Hi, my name is Arnold Custodio and welcome to another In Motion Hosting video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to create an autoresponder in your webmail interface. So before you begin creating the autoresponder within the webmail interface, you first have to log in to the webmail interface. So here I'm going to do that now. After you log in, in the top right hand corner you'll see your account name and a drop down arrow. Click on that drop down arrow and then scroll down until you see auto responders and click on that. The auto responder window that op opens up at this point in time shows that you can modify existing auto responders or add a new auto responder. Again, an auto responder basically is just used to show that you're not available at this point in time, such as if you're on vacation. So in order to add a new auto responder, you would just click on add auto responder. If you need to edit an autoresponder, any existing ones will be listed down here in the table. So click on Add Autoresponder. And you'll see several fields here under the Add Autoresponder that need to be filled in. Let's go over them real quick. First, you see a character set, and this is mainly used for if you're sending a message that's in a different language than English. By default, it is set to UTF-8. They also give you several tags here that are, that are very useful. So you can see that there's a subject of the message sent to the autoresponder. This is pulled from the message that it's autoresponding to. So if someone is sending a message to you saying, hey, what's up? and they have a subject of saying hello, then the subject in the, the message of the autoresponder would say hello. Same thing for the from, which is the name of the message that's being responded to by the autoresponder, and also the incoming email sender's address. The interval field is used by the autoresponder to create an interval to wait before responding to an email. And this is useful because if your sender is sending you a message and they have an autoresponder on themselves, then it stops them from basically spamming your mailbox to the point of making it full. So this is very useful in limiting the number of messages that are going back and forth between one address and another, and it helps to keep from having hundreds and hundreds of automatic responses, especially if someone also has an autoresponder on their end. The number of hours that you want to set depends on how often that you want the responder to respond. So if you want them to only respond like maybe once a day, you may want to set it to a, a high number like 8 hours or maybe even 12 so that it only responds once a day. If you're trying to get it to respond more frequently, then you would use a smaller number of hours. The email address is always set to your email address. As you can see here, it's set to want a test email account. and the from address lets you designate the email address that's being used by the autoresponder. This will allow you to create an email address that is used primarily for your autoresponder. The subject is basically the subject of the auto response. So if you're on vacation, you would say, hey, I'm on vacation, and then say until whatever date. If you want to use specific HTML formatting, then you would check off this message contains HTML. And then the body would be the body of your message. Finally, you see a start and a stop, and each of these have either immediately or, or stop is saying never, and there's also a custom option for each, which allows you to set or schedule a time when the autoresponder is going to start and if it's going to stop at a particular date. And then once you've created your autoresponder, you would just click on Create and Modify. So let's go ahead and create a sample autoresponder, and I'm going to set the interval to 8 hours. And then I'm going to say, do not respond for the firm address. And then I'm going to state that I'm on vacation. And then finally, you have the body of the autoresponder message. And here you can just give the information about where you are and when you'll be back 
basically useful information to the users so that if you have an alternate email address or alternate contact information, they can find that here. And then once you have the body done with what you want to say, you would click on start, say it started immediately if you want to start it right now, or custom, then you can set a date when it's going to start. You can also stop an existing particular autoresponder, or you can set a date for when it will stop. And then when you're satisfied with the message body and the scheduling, then you would just click on create slash modify button at the bottom. And then you'll see a screen confirming that your autoresponder has been created. And then you click on back, it'll send you back to the default webmail interface screen. So if you want to go look at your list of autoresponders again, you would click on the drop down arrow with the username and then click on autoresponders. And here you can see the autoresponder that I just created. And that's how you create an autoresponder within the webmail interface. Thanks again for watching this InMotion hosting video tutorial. We hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up below and also subscribe to our channel. We'd also appreciate a few comments so that we could know what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Do you know the InMotion Hosting Support Center has thousands of articles, pictures, and video tutorials to help you out with your web hosting questions? Something for everyone, from beginners to experts. Join our community and sign up with your Facebook or Google Plus for free swag, prizes, and discounts. Visit our support center at InMotionHosting.com support.